My name's Ray Sheska. I spent 43 years in retail automotive, and I'm going to teach you a foolproof way, well, pretty foolproof, to get the best possible price you can from a new car dealer. All right, folks, let's jump right in. You're trying to buy a new car. How do you know you're paying a fair price, and how do you get the best deal? First things first, Dad, you have to get dealers to compete. This works for new cars only. It kind of works for used cars. We'll break down the distinction in just a moment, but we'll start with new cars. You get dealers to compete. You get them to compete on price, but it's not just the selling price of a vehicle. You have to get them to compete on what's called the out the door price. Dad, can you please explain what the out the door price is for those that are unfamiliar? The out the door price is the total price of the vehicle, including all fees, all accessories, all taxes, everything. Kind of, sort of, if you said to them, I want to write a check, not that they would know what a check looks like, but I want to write a check for the total amount. So I need to know the absolute total amount of the cost of the vehicle. That is the out-the-door price. Now, don't be rude when you're asking for the out-the-door price. We literally have email templates that you can just copy and paste, or you can make phone calls to the dealers, or you can even go into the dealership. You need to get your hands on this out-the-door price. Why is the out-the-door price that important? Because it is your only apples-to-apples -apples comparison from dealership to dealership. So when you get dealers to compete, you have to get them to compete on the same number. And typically what happens in the auto business, Dad, you experience this in your career all the time, is dealers will pay, uh, place unreasonably low numbers on their online advertisements to try and get customers into the dealership, but then add on all sorts of fees and add-ons and accessories. And ultimately, those get factored into the out-the-door price. So it's like a little bit of bait and switch happens, and this is why you focus on the OTD Instead, Dad, what do you do once you get your hands on one OTD? I think you go to CarEdge.com and you contact more dealers, but what do you do, Dad? You used to have customers do this to you all the time. What do the most savvy customers do to get that best price? Uh, they share that price with another dealer and say, uh, well, how much can you beat it by? And, uh, you know, it's, it's not unlike anything else in life. The more people you have competing to earn your business, the greater the likelihood is that somebody's going to I don't know, offer a much lower price than somebody else just to win. So if once you get one out the door price, you need to share it with other dealers. And what you're doing is you're creating a competition for your sale. Your sale has value to a dealership and one dealership is going to place more value on it than another. And they'll be the ones that give you the cheapest out the door price. Pops, there's a major issue out there. There are all sorts of people brokering your data and anyone can buy it. Whether it's your social security number, your home address, what school you went to, all that information and so much more is being sold online to marketers and scammers. That's bad. Absolutely. And the way to prevent that is to use Delete Me. Delete Me will help take your information away from all those brokers so that they can't sell it to the scammers out there. Look at you, Pops. You sound like a Delete Me user yourself. I know I use Delete Me and hundreds of my records have been scraped off of the internet, getting that information out of the hands of those scammers, marketers, and everything in between. We have a special offer for our Car Edge community, 20% off when you sign up with the link joindeleteme.com slash car edge. Top of the description will be that link, Dad. We both use Delete Me. We enjoy using Delete Me. I like the monthly reports that show me all my data being removed from the internet. We thank Delete Me for sponsoring our channel. One day you might not even see me here. <laughs> All right, now we said this is foolproof. What makes this foolproof is it is that competition dynamic that you just described, but there are some nuances and I wanna talk about timing. So if you're watching this video at the end of 2024, good on you. This is the best time of year to buy a new vehicle. And if you're interested in used cars, just stay tuned. Look at the little thing in the bottom of the YouTube player. We're gonna do used cars in just a second here. So stay tuned for that. But dad, timing is another really important aspect to all of this, which is, End of the month, end of the quarter, end of the year. Typically, dealers are more willing to give you a more aggressive out-the-door price when they have their volume thresholds. They're right knocking on the door of their volume thresholds, and they need to hit their goals. Can you take a moment and share some anecdotes or some of your experience from your career selling cars for 40-plus years? What happens at the end of the month, end of the quarter, and especially end of the year that influences a dealer's willingness to be competitive on price? If there are dealer incentives from the manufacturer if the manufacturer has set up a sales goal for you and once you hit that sales goal a lot of money rolls in for hitting it well that's a determining factor as to what the deals could look like at the end of the month i remember a situation at one of the bmw dealerships i was at when the owner said to one of the other sales managers he said 
you took a $2,500 loss on that car. What, what were you thinking? And his response was, I was thinking the $200,000 in factory to dealer money would more than make up for that $2,500 loss, at which point the owner said, thank you. Good job, young man. Um, so you can see that there there is rationale behind some really great deals for customers in order to hit sales objectives that have been set up on a monthly, quarterly, or annual basis by the manufacturers. So dad, is it fair to suggest that that's across the board, all brands? And I ask this question in part because if you watch our channel here at Car Edge or go to our website, caredge.com, we are so focused on like market insights, like market dynamics, supply and demand. And obviously vehicle supply is up and demand is down. So I'd imagine all manufacturers have a program like this right now to help incentivize volume. But, you know, you have more experience than me. You worked for so many different manufacturers. I guess the, the root of my question is, as a customer, how can we know that the dealership has this type of volume incentive at play? Or is it just safe to assume that most all of them do? It's safe to assume that most do. Not all, but most do. And, uh, you know, there's always monthly, quarterly, annual goals that dealerships have set that they're trying to hit, even if they're just internal goals that they want to hit or goals that a salesperson wants to hit to earn a larger bonus. Um, you know, nobody can fight on your behalf better than a salesperson who might be looking at a five or $10,000 bonus if he were to make just one more sale. And trust me, he's going to go in there and bite the sales manager's head off till he gets what he needs so he can earn that extra money. I've had it happen to me. I can't tell you how many times. So it's almost like this timing piece is a cascading compensation structure that like end of the month is just more pressure. So it Again, you're going to get dealers to compete. What are you going to get them to compete on? The out the door price. When are you going to do this? The second half of the month. If you can really time it up, it's the end of a quarter or it's the end of the year. That is how you get the best price on a new car. You can use all sorts of other information. We provide so much of it back at caredge.com, but the simplest method is right there. Let's talk about used cars, dad, and why this approach doesn't work quite as well for used vehicles. And I think it's in part because there's no such thing as two identical used cars. However, there are two identical, three identical, five identical, or in some cases, hundreds of identical new cars sitting on dealer lots. Is that correct? That is correct. There's no such thing as two used cars that are alike. They're similar they could be similar models. They could have similar miles, uh, but we don't know how one might have been uh, maintained versus the other. We don't know if one might have had an accident versus the other. So there's there's no such thing as two alike used cars, similar but not alike. And so therefore, this this price compression that we're talking about of competing one dealer against the other doesn't necessarily hold the same weight on a pre-owned car. It doesn't. However, when you do negotiate for a used vehicle, your biggest leverage is understanding market dynamics. So what do I mean by that? If a dealer is advertising a vehicle for sale at $20,000, you should feel empowered. You can do it back on caredge.com slash sell, or you can do it various other places online. See what dealers would pay to buy that vehicle wholesale from you as a customer if you were going to sell it and then start to assess, okay, is the dealer price versus the price that Carvana would pay or CarMax would pay? Is that a reasonable gap? You can also look at values like black book values. Those are values that dealers look at. Or if you have access to it, you can start to get your hands on auction data as well. These are things back at caredge.com that we empower customers with. So a lot of used vehicle negotiations is around market dynamics, understanding the uh, supply and demand of a particular vehicle in your area. And you can still do competition. There's nothing wrong with that, especially if you are legitimately interested in all those vehicles that you're interested in or that you're that you're pursuing. The challenge is going to be communicating and convincing the dealer that you really have, you know, like a, an exact match for what you're looking for versus on new cars. It's cut and dry. It's black and white. It's very, very Clear. So on used cars, it is still the out-the-door price, but you're really going to anchor on market intelligence versus competition. And on new cars, it's really competition. You can still use market intelligence to know that you're getting a fair price as well. And timing, Dad, timing for used cars, it's still the same, like end of month, end of quarter, end of yes. year's good, but that's more just because there's frenzy at the dealership. It's not because there's, you know, there's no OEM incentive to sell a certain threshold of used vehicles. It's more like dealership specific pressure, correct? Absolutely. All right, folks, there you go. If we can help you out with anything, caredge.com, subscribe to the channel. And dad, thanks for sharing your insights as always. Well, thank you.